Did you know that you could use Desmos on the SAT to solve equations instantly without having to do any math? We're going to be walking through all the essentials of using this amazing tool so that by the end of this video, you'll be better prepared than literally half the people who take the SAT. Let's take a look. So graphing with Desmos is really pretty simple. All you have to do is type the equation you want to graph into the input box and Desmos will plot it instantly. If you then go down to the next input box, you can put in a second equation to plot multiple graphs at the same time, which you can then toggle on or off by clicking on the colored button to the left of each expression. By the way, if you ever want to change the appearance of what you have graphed, instead click and hold down on that colored button for a few seconds. Then you can change the color, the line style, the transparency, and the thickness of the curve. Now that we have our expression plotted on the graph, we can pick out points in the curve that would serve as a solution to our expression. To pick one out, you just click and hold somewhere on the curve itself. You can keep holding down on the mouse button and drag along the curve to try to hone in on a particular x value or y value. When you click on the input box for one of your expressions, you might see some gray dots appear. These can indicate the location of x and y intercepts, as well as points of intersection between that expression and whatever else you have graphed. This has some really useful applications that we'll talk about in a little bit. If you click on any of these points, it will show you their decimal x and y coordinates. While these will typically disappear the moment you click on something else, you can plot them more permanently by clicking that little export icon next to the ordered pair to transfer it to an input box. The points you plot on the graph can also be given a label by clicking that little checkbox underneath them. To give them a custom label, you can also enter whatever you like in the space next to that. By the way, you can graph points like this manually just by entering the ordered pair on another input box, just like we have here. Plotted points can also be toggled on or off by clicking that icon on the left, or formatted by clicking and holding that colored icon. This has many of the same options as we saw with curves, with some of the added options to modify the position, size, and angle of our label if one is enabled. You also see towards the bottom there is an option that locks or unlocks the point's position. Unlock it and you'll be able to click and drag your point around the graph. There's also some options to clamp it so you can only drag it vertically or horizontally. If you use the mouse to click and hold somewhere in the empty space around the curve, you can pan around the graph using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. There's also a plus and minus sign in the top right that can quickly zoom in and out in steps. Clicking on the house icon beneath that will return the graph to its default zoom centered on the origin. To fine tune your graph settings, hit the wrench icon in the top right. You'll see a bunch of configuration options in here. A particular note, you can precisely set the minimum and maximum balance displayed for the X and Y axes and the step size for the major grid lines. If you're dealing with a problem that involves something numbering in the millions, this can be really useful to quickly get your graph to the size that you want it without having to slowly zoom out over and over. At the bottom of this configuration window, you'll also notice an important toggle to switch from radians to degrees in your input. Make sure you check that this is toggled to the correct option before you do any calculations involving angles. One of the most common problems you'll see on the SAT involve functions, and Desmos offers a lot of cool features to help us with those. To set up a function in Desmos, we can simply write out the equation that defines the function, making a note of the letter that we use to denote the function. A graph will appear as soon as we type it, and so if you want to find the value of a function for whatever x value, you can just click and drag along the curve, just like we showed earlier. Alternatively, if we just need to plug in an x value, we can go down to the next input box, enter our function with the desired x input, and that will just give us the precise corresponding value for our function. If we're ever asked to find the value of a transformation for a function, you can literally just write in the expression for that transformation. Plug in the x value into the transformed function, and then you've got your answer. If we ever need to, we can also define lettered constants that might appear in a function or expression. Just set the desired letter equal to the number that you want. You'll notice a slider will appear below these, allowing us to tweak the value of the constant if needed. While this is set between negative 10 and 10 by default, we can modify these to extend the length of our slider. To see how this works in action, go to desmos.com practice. Then click on Choose Assessment at the top, 
and then from the drop down menu select the college board option that includes the SAT. This will simulate the version of Desmos that will appear on the SAT. Let's check out another problem together, but this time feel free to pause the video right here and try this problem on your own with Desmos open in another window. You might be wondering why 84 is not an option here for the value of P. Take a closer look and note the difference in the exponents between the expressions, which complicates things a bit. There's nothing the SAT loves more than throwing in a little extra detail that's easy to overlook. Fortunately, we can just plug these equations into Desmos and match them with a slider like I've set up here. From the answer choices, I know that P will be greater than 10, so I'll extend the range of the slider up to 100. Now if I just drag my slider to match the graphs of the equations, I can find P is about 16. And well, we already have our answer. Choice A. Done. Desmos also offers an insanely powerful regression feature that can instantly solve for a single unknown variable in an equation. To use it, just replace the equal sign in the equation with the tilde key. Something to keep in mind though is that Desmos protects the use of the lowercase letters E, X and Y, so you won't be able to use those to denote functions or constants. That being said, capital letters work just fine. Typing a number just after the letter will also automatically add it as a subscript. You can also add custom subscripts by hitting the underscore key. So while they won't like you using lowercase x as a constant, you can just use lowercase x with a subscript, and it'll be perfectly fine with that. If you entered everything correctly, you'll find the value of our variable that solves the equation given under where it says regression parameters. This feature can also be used for exponential equations as well as linear ones. Let's say you're given one of those compound interest word problems. Yearly compounding interest means we have to take the starting value they give us, in this case the $1,000, and since this is increasing by R% percent every year, we have to multiply that 1000 by a factor of 1 plus R over 100. This factor is going to multiply our starting 1000 for every year that passes. So after 4 years, we have this factor multiplying 4 times. So let's raise it to the power of 4, and we're told after those 4 years this is equal to $1,464. R is the only unknown value here, so let's replace the equal sign with a tilde, and it does all the math for us. We already have our answer, choice A. While this regression feature is awesome, it does come with some limitations. Most importantly, it will only ever give you a single solution. So for quadratic equations like this one, for example, which have multiple solutions, only one of those solutions will be shown. For some problems like this one, they'll accept either solution, so it's not a big deal. But sometimes they might ask for the negative solution instead of the positive one. If that's the case, we can just graph the function on the left-hand side and identify the zeros graphically by clicking on the x-intercepts, which will give us both solutions just as quickly. Let's try another question together. Just like before, feel free to pause the video right here and try this one on your own. Now while we could certainly solve this one by hand, it's way faster just to type it in and let Desmos do the work for us, replacing the equal sign with the tilde key again. Don't forget though that that lowercase x is a protected letter here, and it's going to complain if we use it in the regression, so let's change it to a capital X instead. This gives us the value of x as 8, and we want 6x, so we can just type that on the next line and we have our solution, b. An alternate method for finding solutions is to simply use the intersection point between your curve and the desired y value or x value. By the way, in the input boxes you can always enter y equals some number to create a horizontal line and x equals some number to create a vertical line. That might help pin down the intersection point more precisely. One of the biggest time savers Desmos offers is solving systems of equations, including both linear and nonlinear equations. Simply enter your equations as they're given and locate the point of intersection. The x and y values of each coordinate correspond to a solution to the system. Trying to do something like this by hand could cost you precious minutes, and as you can see here, Desmos did it literally instantly. This method also goes for systems of inequalities, the solution set for the system corresponds to where the shaded regions of each inequality overlap. You can very quickly identify what coordinates would appear in this region, including the maximum and minimum values along the boundaries. To save additional time, Desmos offers a long list of keyword shortcuts that can be quickly used to perform specific types of computations or analysis. While you can certainly use their keypad at the bottom to enter things like exponents and radicals, these can quickly be done just by typing sqrt in the input box for a square root, 
or the caret symbol for exponents. You can also type out nth root for higher order roots. For the mathematical constant pi, simply type pi and it will automatically replace it. You can also spell out the Greek letter theta to use it as a graphing variable. The Greek letters alpha, beta, and phi can also be similarly used as definable constants. For problems involving coordinate geometry, you can type the keyword distance followed by parentheses enclosing your two ordered pairs. Each of those ordered pairs should also be enclosed in their own parentheses with the coordinate separated by a comma. If you defined your two points earlier with letters, you can use those corresponding letters here in the place of the ordered pair. Similarly, you can find the midpoint between two points by using the keyword midpoint in the same way that we used the distance keyword earlier. These two keyword shortcuts can save you a lot of time by helping you avoid having to work out the midpoint and distance formulas by hand. For problems involving statistics and data analysis, you can define a set of data using brackets instead of parentheses, with entries all separated by commas. You can set this to a letter just like you can any constant or function. There are some useful keywords that can help us find the mean and standard deviation, like we're being asked about here. If you have a good enough conceptual understanding what mean and standard deviation represent, you might be able to eyeball a solution, but try pausing the video here and see if you can guess what keywords we can use to instantly identify them. So to quickly find the mean of a data set, all you have to do is type in the keyword mean and then enclose all of our data in parentheses. You can either do this by defining the data set like we did here on a separate line, or by inputting the data set directly with brackets inside the parentheses of our keyword. The standard deviation can then similarly be found with the keyword STDDEV. There's also a similar keyword for finding the median, and putting it in the same fashion that we used earlier. You can also get a statistical summary, including the minimum, maximum, and quartiles, by using the keyword STATS. If you really want to become an expert at using Desmos, check out our video on advanced Desmos skills in the description below. If you'd like to book a remote or in-person session with one of our specialized SAT tutors, feel free to reach out to us at our website, principiatutors.com, or email us at info at principiatutors.com. Links are in the description below. That's all for now. See you in the next video!